it's happening in New York, New Jersey, or Long Island. Hear about it with Joe Piscopo. Mornings, 6 to 10 on AM 970. The Answer. Anthony Pope right here. You can see on TV. Hi, Anthony. There's your camera right there, man. Great to have you. How you doing? Good morning. Good morning, Good morning guys. Just welcome. Welcome. And uh, you Happy know to what? be here. You don't want your sweater on, Anthony? I took the sweater. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit of a sauna in here. <laughs> hey, listen, I could use, I could lose a couple pounds. So it's we're good. either, Counselor, could you <laughs> see the interrogation lights? <laughs> if you don't tell us yeah, what actually, we want to know like about legal analysis. Right now. <laughs> Except on Mondays. Mondays it's freezing. It is. I know. I know. It's true. It's like it's either freezing or it's so. It's like well, here's some water. God forbid. We need. We need. <laughs> I got some stuff. coffee. I want yeah, coffee. coffee. Good. Good. Uh, well, yeah. Hey, well, how you doing, my friend? Everything good? I'm, I'm well, Joe. Thank you. How's yeah, Bloomfield Avenue? You go back. You yeah, walk around. Come on. You know, here's actually, I was going to go to the Belmont Tavern yeah, last night, oh, oh. and I couldn't get anybody to go with me. Wait, Nobody wait, wanted to go to the Belmont. Wait, where was I? I think I was, <laughs> no, I was probably out somewhere. I think we were in Wall I would go to Belmont. Matter of fact, my cousin Paulie. Texted a picture. His son Paulie, who's a North cop, by the way, yeah, yeah, very, very proud, great, yeah. very proud of him. And uh, so Paulie sent takes a picture of the wall at the Belmont Avenue. Now, if you're listening outside, and people listen outside the uh, New York, New Jersey area on AM nine seventy Answer dot com, this is where we're from. This is Bloomfield Avenue. You hear me talk about the Bronx. And by the way, if you're from Philly, you know, if you're from areas around the country, uh, Chicago. I'm from Chicago, the way you know uh, uh, Jimmy Belushi always proud to be from Chicago. We come from Bloomfield Avenue. It's a it's an eleven point two miles. It goes from uh, the most Stressed area of Newark, New Jersey, all the way up to the really rich people in Essex Fells, yeah, New Jersey, right? Yeah, exactly, up sure. 11.2 miles. And it's like our main street. It's Main Street for Essex County, New Jersey. Frankie Valley, Joey Pesci, Frankie Vincent, everybody from Bloomfield Avenue. So Paulie took a picture of the wall. I took about that. There's my picture from 100 yeah, years ago. Yeah. And then now Steve Adubato's picture is up there. I'm sure your picture is up there yeah, somewhere. Yeah, it's, it's great. It's a great place. It's a great stop. And as a matter of fact, you re- if you remember... When we first got involved with Bloomfield Avenue, the project, yep, yep. and HBO got Chaz to write the script. Yes, sir. That's where we took him. That's right. That was one of the remember first that? places remember we that? took we him. Remember that? We put Chaz yeah, in there. To the Belmont Tower. Which we have to revisit that. And we got Joey Benefit. We got Bloomfield Avenue. Anthony and I are partners in Avellino Entertainment. And uh, we're going to really make that. We got to make those work. The thing is, I know you're always, you're in a serious life or death situation. I don't know how you do it. You're in a federal courtroom, and people are, on, lives are on the line, you know? So not that, well, and I'm always busy on the radio, but it's nothing like what you do. I don't know how you deal with that day in, day out as a counselor. Uh, you know, I enjoy it. I, I, do, I do. I was in court yesterday in a hearing on a motion to suppress a Fourth Amendment violation. And the one thing about it is that he, there are times I'll be sitting at counsel table and I'll have my case together. I'll be completely prepared, but not certain as to exactly how I want to start off the cross-examination. But for something, it's like you as a celebrity. Once I'm up, the yeah, lights are yeah, on, yeah, yeah, and I it just takes over. And, and I just run with it. Do you have break, it, break you know? conferences at your house I was at? And then I saw, and forgive me, you're going to kill me if, I, if I'm talking too frankly here. This is one of my best buddies, Anthony Pope. So I saw an easel up. In one in 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 your in your office at right. one, your houses you used to have you're not there anymore. Did you do you run do you run your your summary your jury oh, yeah. summation? Yeah, I do. You run it and kind yeah, of yeah, absolutely. It. I, I put it. What I do is I'll put bullet points. Yeah. On an easel uh, with an opening statement, a summation. Sometimes on cross examination, if there's points that I want to hit, mm. I'll write the points, go over them, and cross them off. People people in general will only listen for a certain amount of time. And then they start to lose their concentration. And jurors. F- jurors. And yeah. what you hear is it's usually around 15, 17 minutes. So you want to break it up. And you break it up by showing a visual. You break it up by making an example oh, of something. Oh, so oh. What, what you need to do is constantly be mindful that you have a jury and you want them to always pay attention and listen. So uh, it's it's a tactic I use, but it's it's a it's the best way to do it. There's no question. Sometimes less is more. I've seen you in, in, in court, Anthony Pope, and sometimes less is more. Sometimes you let the other side just kind of bury themselves. Well, you know, listen, you, you have to know when to speak <laughs> and when not to speak. Yeah, yeah. And that's something you learn. As you grow in the law. Yeah. You know, when I first started off, I was impatient. I couldn't wait to get up. Couldn't wait to cross-examine, you know. And then as you get older, you get a little more patient and you wait. Let somebody bury themselves. Let them go where they want. (laughs) Uh, Look, I've always said, I'll... 
give me a very competent attorney as an adversary. Yeah, yeah. I don't want inexperienced lawyers. Because mm-hmm. when you get inexperienced lawyers, they make mistakes. They're constantly objecting to things they shouldn't object to. They're just falling all over themselves. Give me a very good lawyer on the other side as an adversary. Everything yeah. always goes better. Yeah. Because you know what you're doing, and you have the experience of being there. You know? Anthony Pope, tell us what you, you tweeted the other day. I know you're not uh, gigantic <laughs> on social media. You and I. It's like, I, you got to yeah. do it. It's a necessary evil. But what happened in California? Tell us about it. Uh, you know, Joe, I'm, I'm listening to the news, and I see the attorney general, uh, a gentleman by the name of Basara, who, state attorney general, the highest law enforcement position in the state, indicates that he is going to prosecute employers who assist ICE agents in enforcement of immigration laws. So I said, this can't be possible. Wait a minute. Let me just go back over this again. Is this really what he is intending to do? And as far as I understand it and everything I've read, that's what he wants to do. He wants to prosecute employers who have immigrants working for them if they assist federal immigration officers in enforcing the immigration laws. Wow. Uh, where did this man come from? Where in the world did he come from to think that you can do something like that? We're now going to prosecute our citizens for abiding by a federal law, by having federal agents come in and ask you questions and ask you to direct them somewhere, and you're going to stymie their efforts and take a position against the federal agents. This is anarchy. Yeah. You can't define this any other way. It's anarchy. What is this man not getting? I mean, we are really, to me, the the, the greatest threat to this country is not ISIS. It's not pollution. It is our system of justice that exists right now and the politics of it all. I have never seen a division the way it exists, the partisanship, the, the just complete ignoring mm. facts yeah. and law and wanting to just promote a narrative in your particular position, regardless of what the results could it's be. It's going to happen in Jersey, too, man. Is well, that- you know, listen, I, I'm, I'm always a supporter of, of a new governor coming yep. in or a president. Absolutely. I think it's the right thing to do. So I don't know Mr. Murphy, Governor Murphy, but I, I wish him the very best. But every time I listen to him, he's giving something else away or he's promising to help somebody else. I mean, these this is wonderful if you could accomplish Accomplish it. But as an attorney and dealing with law and order, I mean, you're going to make it a sanctuary state. Doesn't that create uh, problems for that, all of us? That's, that's a scary notion. I have to believe that's, that, that's one of those knee-jerk reactions and that simply pandering to a base that you feel yeah. want to hear that. Yeah. And I'm hoping that's what it is because, I first of all, how do you even do that? Make the state a sanctuary city? You're going to pass a law for it? You're going to do the same thing the attorney general is doing now? Tell employers and people you cannot cooperate with the federal government who are here lawfully and enforcing a federal law? Immigration is the province of the federal government. That's why Congress is not doing their job, because if there's an immigration issue, it's for Congress to fix it. Yeah. So every time the president tries to tell him that, people want to blame it back on the president. Why do you keep doing that? You know, Joe, it's, an, it's you know, I'm, I'm a firm believer in God, as you are. But I love when people say, no matter what the circumstance, turn it over to God. And I say, you know what? God must be standing up there, sitting up there and going to himself, wait a minute. I gave you people the opportunity to correct this and make it good. Why do you keep trying to give it back to me? I don't understand. I gave you free will. I gave you knowledge, intelligence. I gave you all of this to make it work. And every time you have a problem, it's turn it over to God. It's like me with my relationships. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. How many times? I I just don't get it. Ari, man, we got some real issues. We got some real problems. If I have a relationship problem, I look, God, please. He goes, hey, hey, don't look at me. Don't look at me. You walked into that yourself, Joe. Joey, please, I don't want to hear it like that. What about this Prococo trial? I don't like it because there's too many Italian names, so I don't even want to go there. If Cuomo, Prococo, that's, yeah. like, that's, come on. So, that, you know, like I said, and you, you heard on the way in, I was joking. What's a little bribe here and there? But, <laughs> yeah, but does it look serious, uh, what's going on? Well, listen, certainly if what has been reported can be proven beyond a reasonable doubt, yeah. then it's a violation of yeah. the law. Yeah, but yeah, you yeah. and I both know that it wouldn't be the first time the government has taken a case or they've gone overboard or they've charged somebody who wasn't guilty. Unfortunately, that happens. And one of the greatest things that separate us from a third world country is our jury system. I've always said that. 
I, I always maintain it was the press and the jury system. Well, it ain't the press anymore. So the only thing we have left is really the jury system. Yeah, man. You know, the average people that get in there and make a decision whether or not somebody's guilty and look at the evidence, and regardless of what the defense wants, what the prosecution wants, these 12 people are going to make a decision. And, and that's a powerful thing, and we got to just... Thank God it still exists yeah. in this country. In that regard, what happens with Robert Menendez, U.S. Senator? They're going right. to try him again. Is that a good idea? As far, I was surprised, quite mm-hmm. honestly, Joe, because I think when you asked me that question, I said, I didn't see it. Now, again, I wasn't at the trial, so I don't have the insight that the U.S. attorney has. Mm. Uh, but I thought if there was really a vote of 10 to 2 for acquittal, and because of the fact that you have a set of circumstances which on their face are not illegal— what they were trying to prove is his intent was not, it wasn't a gift, it wasn't a courtesy from a very, very close friend, but it was an exchange for favors mm-hmm. that he was selling his office. So when you have a set of facts that are not in dispute, yes, took the plane trip, went on the vacation, the defense didn't deny that, but he didn't do it for the reasons that the government's telling you. It's always an easier case for the defense. When you have, you concede the set of facts, Mm. you just give them an alternative explanation for what occurred. That makes it a lot easier for the defense. And if the jury was 10 to 2, based on the circumstances and all the money that it's cost us, I couldn't see them trying them again. So I was surprised to hear that. What do you think the outcome? I mean, just as your legal uh, analytical uh, take on it all. Well, I'll say this. It's always easier for for the prosecution the second time. Because they oh, have seen, they've seen what the defense is going to do. Yeah, yeah. They've listened to them. They heard them. Yeah, they they heard yeah. the explanations. Yeah. So now, whatever they may have missed on the first trial, mm. they try to tighten up on the second trial. Yeah. So typically, Joe, uh, retrying a case is always easier. It always gives the advantage to the prosecution. He's a tough one, though, Menendez, man. He ain't going down easy. Well, you know, you know. again, I, uh, another... St- State, our, our United States senator, but I was I was disappointed, um, not in the verdict. That's the verdict, whatever the jury decides, because I don't have a, a particular dog in this race. But when he came out and he started attack, <laughs> he started telling people that were against them, I'm not going to forget you. Was great. Was like, I thought he was I, Italian for a yeah, minute. Exactly. <laughs> I said, Wait, is, is, is this a, a Don or is this a it senator? Was, it was. I, I, Those the, who instead of being me. humbled yes. and saying thank you, I thank my supporters. <laughs> if if I, there was any misstep, I'm going to try to great. correct it. It was great. I, no, the first thing out of his mouth is, "I know who you are. <laughs> I'll remember you, and I'm going to get you." I just shook my head. I said, "Only in New Jersey." I said, "Would somebody say this?" <laughs> it was on national television. <laughs> national television, threatening people. <laughs> I'm going to get you. <laughs> You got to love it. And that'll probably garner him a more of a bigger voter oh base. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Only in New Jersey. Anthony Paul, we love you, Anthony. Thanks, man. Former cop, thanks for your service to the great city of Newark, oh, too, happy, my friend. Happy to do it. Thanks oh, for sure. God happy bless you, here. brother. Anthony Pope right there. Joe Piscop on the Radio 821. It's Debbie. Everybody knows this guy. No, everybody knows he can do a radio show. Joe Piscopo. Mornings, 6 to 10 on AM 970. The Answer.